Hi there. In this video, uh, I'm going to be looking at the business planning process and more specifically uh, looking at forecasting. Now, um, forecasting or projections uh, very broadly are basically uh, the business's prediction about the future. So, um, uh, what can they um, what can they achieve in the future based on uh, using previous data? Now. One of the ways that we're going to look at this is through something called a break-even analysis. Um, now, one of the elements of the break-even analysis is uh, total revenue and total cost. Now, total revenue is the uh, the total amount received from the sales of a good or service, and it's going to be indicated as a TR. Um, and the way you calculate it is by multiplying the selling price, P, uh, by the quantity, Q, of units sold. Now, if you're going to look at mathematically, it'll be like this. So, P times Q equals TR. Price times quantity equals total revenue. Okay. Um, now, if we're going to do as a do an example here. So, for example, if the selling price of something is $100, uh, we times that by 25, which is, say, for example, how many we're going to sell, uh, means that the total revenue is going to be $2,500. Um, that's, that's very basic. Okay. Um, following on from total revenue, uh, we've also got total cost. Now, uh, total cost or TC, this is the total cost involved in producing a certain number of goods or services, and that's made up of uh, of two components: fixed costs (FC) and uh, variable costs (VC). Now, fixed costs uh, they, these are costs that do not vary, regardless of how many uh, units of a good or service are produced. So, um, for example. If a business makes, um, you know, one T-shirt, they're still paying the same amount of rent and insurance as if they were making, say, a million T-shirts. It doesn't change at all. Um, however, variable costs, VC, these are costs that do vary based on the number of goods or services that are produced. Um, if you produce one T-shirt, um, the, you know, the price of electricity for a, to run a machine is going to be a lot less than if you were to produce a thousand T-shirts, uh, because you'd need to be running that machine for a lot longer. Um, same with employees. If you, if you got, if you're paying employees at, on an hourly basis, um, and it takes them one hour to make, say, ten tennis rackets, um, if they need to make a million tennis rackets, you're going to be looking at a lot more man hours, um, so therefore it will increase the, uh, the, the price of, of human resources as well there. Uh, so if you want to look at it, I guess, you know, in a mathematical viewpoint here, um, FC, fixed costs, plus VC, variable costs, will ultimately give you the total cost, the TC. Okay. Um, so now we're going to look at the break-even analysis. Now, th a break-even analysis determines the level of sales, so total revenue, how much money you're actually getting just from selling the product, um, that needs to be generated in order to cover the total cost of production, so the, to uh, the total cost, the TC. Okay. So sales above the break-even point will mean a profit. However, if they're below the break-even point, um, it's going to mean a loss. Okay, now, um, we're going to use an example here a bit later on, um, but you're looking at basically where will there be zero? So if there's a million dollars in sales, at what point in production, how many things do they need to sell in order to offset basically the million dollars in, um, in the cost of production uh, with a million dollars of sales? So how many do they need to sell in order to do that? Okay. Um, now, the way that mathematically you get to look at this is quantity, so Q. So the quantity they need to sell equals uh, the total fixed costs divided by over the unit price of what it is they're actually selling minus the variable costs per unit. How much the variable costs are to produce just one unit. Okay, now we're going to look at it uh, as, with an example here to make it a bit easier. So a new shoe is going to be released and it's going to uh, be priced for consumers at $200, okay? Now, the fixed costs, the FC, fixed costs for these shoes are $600,000. And the variable costs, the VC, are $80 per shoe. So, regardless of how many shoes they make, it's going to cost them $600,000, okay? That might be rent, that might be um, insurance, whatever it is. But for every shoe they make, it uh, costs them $80, okay, as a variable cost. So this might be, again, wages, it might be electricity, um, not sure, okay? 
So first we've got the quantity. So the quantity is how much they need to sell in order to have their costs be offset by how much they're actually making from selling them, okay? So the quantity will be 600,000, okay? Got, uh, we got that from the fixed cost being 600,000 uh, over divided by 200, which is the, the price that um, they'll be selling for minus $80, which is the variable cost per shoe, okay? So then we look at it again. So it'll be 600,000 over 120. And finally, we get to the, um, the, 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 the sum here that they need to sell 5,000 units. So at $200 per shoe, uh, which is what they charge customers, at $200 per shoe, based on all the costs they have to be able to make that shoe, they need to sell 5,000 shoes in order for the total costs to be offset by how much they actually um, charge customers for. So if they sell less than 5,000 shoes, they're losing money, okay? Because they haven't sold enough to be able to offset all the costs, okay? Now, if we're going to look at it in a, um, in a graph form here, um, we've got our, our graph here. So we've got sales in, in thousands down the bottom and we've got total costs in hundreds of thousands along the side there. Um, now, so we can put in our fixed costs uh, line along there as well. Now, it's always $600,000 regardless of uh, how much they're producing. So that's why it's a straight line all the way across. It doesn't matter how many um, items they sell. Uh, it's always going to be $600,000. Okay. Um, then from that, we look at our total costs. Now, that's uh, the fixed costs plus the variable costs that are in included there as well. Um, we can draw in our total revenue. Now, basically, you're looking at um, at um, one, you know, one thousand shoes that they've sold. They make two hundred. Uh, they're um, they're looking at uh, two hundred thousand dollars in costs. Uh, two thousand shoes. They're looking at four hundred thousand dollars in costs. Um, three thousand shoes. They're looking at six hundred thousand dollars in costs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, now, at the point where they intercept. So the total cost and total revenue, that's the break even point. Okay, that's the break even point. So as you can see, it actually um, comes down here and it should meet up to about 5,000 because we've already seen that they need to sell 5,000 shoes in order to offset their total costs. Okay, so um, anything below that break even point's a loss. Okay, they haven't sold enough shoes to offset um, all the costs involved in making them. And uh, with that in mind, then everything above that is going to be profit. Okay, Everything that they sell above that break-even point is profit, meaning that um, they've not only offset the costs, but now they're surpassing them. Okay, um, And finally, in, in the forecasting tool uh, toolkit, I guess, is a cash flow projection. Okay, now these show the changes uh, to the cash position brought about by operating, investing, and financial activities of the business. However, need to make a distinction very clear here. Um, while the cash flow statement um, that we looked at in terms of uh, one of the three financial statements, along with a uh, along with the uh, the profit and loss statement and the balance sheet, whilst the cash flow statement shows how cash has flowed into and out of the business in the past. The cash flow projection shows the cash that is expected to be made or spent over a, uh, over a period of time in the future. Now, um, they can use past performance as an indicator for future performance, but the projection is basically a prediction in terms of um, what, uh, how much cash is going to be coming in and how much cash is going to be going out um, in the future. Uh, well, I really hope that this video was uh, informative enough to give you some idea about how forecasting works in businesses, um, and um, uh, hopefully, um, it's it's made it a bit clearer. Thank you.